Uh, we are continuing our study of Hinduism. Uh, in our last session, we looked at the broad, basic belief structure of Hinduism. I want Hinduism is so enormous and so complex that it is impossible to do justice to Hinduism in a short hour or whatever that we have together. So what I will do is to restrict my conversation to two small scriptures within Hinduism that very significantly uh, describe the spiritual insights and commitments of Hinduism. First, just a word about what Hindus refer to as Hinduism. They say it is the Santana Dharma, which means the eternal way or eternal religion. Neither way or, or, or um, religion quite captures the idea of Dharma, but Dharma means the way of life. Santana Dharma, the eternal way of life, which goes back into the ancient past and continues today. So it is in continuity with the past and in commitment to the present, Santana Dharma. But for this class, we will use the term Hinduism as we talk about this religious system. I'm going to make a few comments on this little booklet here called the Upanishads, the breath of the eternal. Upanishad, it's about the size of the Gospel of Mark, quite short, actually. Um, and uh, there, there, there's a lot of them. This, this is uh, the, the classic uh, de description of the Upanishads. A lot of Hindu scriptures, but this is, this is the classic. And it means to draw near to the teacher. So it's like the picture of a teacher sitting and his son on the floor in front of him, and he is communicating eternal knowledge to his, to his son or to the, to, 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 to the student. In this case, it's Udalaka who is the, uh, the student, and his father is called Svetiketu. And so, Udalaka, when he becomes 12, is sent by his father off to uh, study. And so he returns home after his studies, and he is uh, fairly uh, proud about all that he has learned. He has learned mathematics and so forth and so forth. And so his father, Svetiketu, asks him, I have a question to ask you. Who are you? Ah, we said at the beginning of this course that a universal question is, who are you? What are you here for? <laughs> That's the question dad, the teacher, asked his son. Who are you? And this son who's been away in school says to his father, I don't know. I just don't know. So, dad says to him, go and get a bucket of water. So he gets a bucket of water. Now get some salt and put it in the water. Now taste the water. Taste the water. What do you taste? Water. Now take some salt and put the salt in the water. Now taste the water. What do you taste? Ah, I taste salt, says the student. Where is the salt? I don't know. Do you see the salt? I don't see the salt. But you've tasted salt, yes. Tell me, where is the salt? I don't know. And so wise dad says, tat vam asi. That art thou. That art thou. Nothing. And yet, the taste of you is there. This is to say that Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. Oh, great, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. Oh, that's, the me that's who I am. I'm Atman, I'm, 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 I'm Brahman. Atman is Brahman. Brahman is Atman. Woo, you know. 
And then dad says, neti, neti. No, 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 it's not that, not that. Neti, neti, it's not that. No, you've not understood. Neti, neti. So then the wise father teacher says to Udilaka, get a fig fruit. So he gets a fig fruit. He says, cut it in two. So he cuts it in two. What do you see in the fig fruit? Oh, I see seeds. Get one of those seeds. Cut it in half. Open it up. What do you see? Nothing. There's nothing there. Ah. Atman is Brahman. Brahman is Atman. The nothingness within that seed is you. Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. Oh, says Udalaka, I've got it. I've got it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm like the seed uh, in the fig fruit. And you break it open and nothing is there. Atman is, Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. Neti, 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 says father. No, 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 no. You've not understood. You've not understood. And so the whole Upanishads is a description of that kind of conversation going on between Udalaka and Svetaketu as the, the father teacher is attempting to explain to his son the great mystery that all is Brahman. And Atman, which is my soul, is one with the Brahman, which is the universal soul, and the universal soul is one with my soul, which is my individual soul. Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. <clears throat> o Brahman supreme, formless art thou, and yet through the reason none knows, thou bringest forth many forms, thou bringest them forth and then withdrawest them to thyself. Fill us with thought of thee. Thou art the fire, thou art the sun. Thou art the air, thou art the moon. Thou art the starry firmament, thou art Brahman supreme. Thou art the waters, the creator of all. Thou art woman, thou art man. Thou art youth, thou art the maiden. Thou art the old man tottering with his staff, thou the faces everywhere. Maya is thy divine consort. Wedded to thee, thou art her master, her ruler. Red, white, and black is she, each color a guna. Many are her children, the rivers, the mountains, flower, stone, and tree, beast and bird and man. In every way, like thyself, thou art in flesh, forgetting what thou art. Unitest with Maya, but only for a season, parting from her at last, thou regainest thyself. A description of Brahman. All is Brahman. Everything is Brahman. Now what is this term Maya that slips in there? Maya means illusion. Maya means illusion. But neti neti, you haven't understood it. Haven't understood it. <laughs> neti neti. Maya is illusion. Maya is, is to believe that the phenomenal world that we see and handle is real to feel that this book I have in my hand is a real book. That's a deception. The book is Maya. The phenomenon of book is really an illusion which clothes the universal Brahman. Uh, and so we think we have seen Brahman, but we really have not. The book is only an illusion of reality. It's not the reality itself. You know, with that sort of conviction, one could see why Hinduism has never given itself to a careful study of history. Why would you study history carefully if the phenomenal world is really an irrelevant illusion that you should somehow cease to think in terms of that illusion? Why would you do that? History is just an illusion. In dramatic contrast to the Bible, for example, where history is taken very seriously. I read through the Bible once every year, and I'm always impressed with the drama of history that page after page after page in that book describes, taking it very seriously. 
history as real. But within Hinduism, uh, this Maya concept, that since all is Brahman, the phenomenal world, the historical events, are really an illusion. They really are not an accurate projection of reality as it really is. Note this poem here again. O Brahman supreme, formless art thou, and yet, though the reason none knows, thou bringest forth many forms, thou bringest them forth, and then withdrawest thyself them to thyself, fill us with thoughts of thee. All is Brahman. The conversation between Svetiketu and Udalaka. <clears throat> And so in that case then, sin sin is believing that the illusion is true. Sin is referred to as avidya. Avidya, meaning Ignorance. So what is ignorance? Ignorance is to believe <laughs> that this book is a real book. It's not. All is Brahman. And so the ignorance within my soul, which leads me to believe that this class is a real phenomenon and that you are real expressions of, 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 of reality, is really an illusion since all is maya. And so to think that the illusion is real is therefore ignorance. You are thinking wrongly. And that's referred to as avidya. Wrong knowledge is avidya. Again, in dramatic contrast to biblical faith, where sin is the decision to turn away from God and all the consequences that come because of that decision. There's no such notion within, within Hinduism. Rather, sin is seen as ignorance. Ignorance of what? The ignorance of believing that I really am David W. Shank, actually teaching a class today, you know. I think that's real. I wrote to my wife about it. What's going on in the class? I think this is a real phenomenon. That's ignorance. That's a video. That's a video. I've not really understood reality that all, the reality that all is Maya. All is an illusion. That this is not a real class that I need to understand. If I don't understand that, then I'm guilty of ignorance for thinking that you are actually real people. You get it? You understand it very, very well. You think you understood? Ah, Anita, 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 Anita. You haven't understood. If you think you've got it, you missed it. <laughs> so if you feel a little bit confused, that's okay. Anita, 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 Anita. You never really fully understand what I'm talking about. And that's a video. That's ignorance. That's what gets us into trouble. <clears throat> now, within this Upanishadic worldview, the goal of the whole philosophical movement is to come to a reality, come to the to the understanding of the reality that that all is Brahman and that my individual soul needs to be absorbed into the universal Brahman. And so like we said the other, the other day, we're on this cycle of reincarnation going round and round and round. And the goal is to get off this cycle. That's the goal, to get off the cycle and to become absorbed into the universal Brahman. That's what we're about, what we should be working at. How do you do that? How do you become absorbed into the universal Brahman? And here is where the Hindu life stages are very helpful. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, Visit tvsseminary.com. When a young boy becomes 12 or so, he is given the thread of his caste. It's quite a ceremony. 
that the whole community takes part in, where these young boys receive the thread of caste, which they then wear upon themselves for the rest of their days. So that has determined now the caste in which they live and in which they will grow and in which they will finally die. So everyone is put in his particular caste category. We talked about the big caste, I mean the, the, the broad overarching caste, the Brahman, the Kshatriya, the, um, the Vaishyas and the, uh, and the Sudras, those great caste systems. And within each of those caste systems, remember we talked about the Yati, uh, the, the sub-caste system, that thread places you in your caste and sub-caste system. And so, you then grow and you marry, and you have children, and you go about the responsibilities of the household. When you become an old man, then the next step, so first of all, it's, it's the householder, the householder's, the householder's life, okay? Then, when you become an old man, you leave the householder experience and you become, and, and, you, and you enter into a quest for coming to understand the reality that all is Brahman. And so you become a wandering, a wandering hermit, sannyasi. So you become a wandering hermit, uh, making your living by begging for food and things like that. Uh, so you, it's very good to go up into the Himalaya mountains and spend those years in those mountains living in a cave somewhere, disciplining the body so that you don't love your body anymore, um, various uh, yoga exercises you may participate in and so forth. So you're now a sannyasi, a wandering hermit seeking for the enlightenment which reveals to you truly, truly that all is Brahman. And that enlightenment is called mukti. When you acquire that enlightenment, you have now entered a state of mukti. Mukti, which means enlightenment. Enlightenment to what? Enlightenment to realize that you are uh, one with the eternal Brahman. That Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. That's mukti, that's enlightenment. And so this sannyasi wanders around until he has acquired mukti. Now for me, when I go to India and I see a sannyasi walking down the street, often scantily clad, uh, he has ceased to take baths and so forth, you know, I think in terms of him having lost his sense of identity. And uh, that, that's how it looks like to me, you see, as an outsider. But within Hinduism, a man who walks down the street, you know, on bathed and so forth, um, he is revered as a, as a sannyasi. He has entered into the understanding that Atman is Brahman and Brahman is Atman. And so he has no further contact with the phenomenal world or with his family. We would probably say that he has lost his mind. But within this understanding, he hasn't lost his mind. He has only come into the understanding of reality that all is Brahman. That's what has happened. And so, when he dies, since he has lost all desire for individual existence, when he dies, he will be absorbed into the universe of Brahman. That's why they often put the ashes of uh, the deceased, uh, scatter the ashes on one of the rivers of India, you know. And so the ashes become absorbed into and one with the waters of the river and he will now vanish the cycles of birth, of, of incarnation and reincarnation because he has come to realize that he truly belongs to the universal and the placing of the ashes of his dead body into the rivers where the ashes become absorbed in the river is a visual sign of what has happened, that he has lost his identity. He's become absorbed into the universal. So I'm saying the life stages 
within Hinduism are planned to lead to that eventual reality. First of all, receiving the, the, uh, the, the court of caste, then his responsibility as a householder, caring for his family and all of that, and then leaving home to become a sannyasi. And when he finally acquires that goal, he is now referred to as someone who has, who has achieved mukti and is ready to be absorbed into the universal Brahman upon death. Now let me hasten to say that although that is the ideal pattern within the Hindu understanding of a person's journey through life, um, there's many, many Hindus never go through those stages. They don't, they don't embrace becoming a sannyasi wandering in the hills of, of the Himalaya mountains. Uh, they will continue living and working within their families. Multitudes do that. And particularly today with the very secular winds that blow across India, uh, that might not be as practiced as it was at one time. I'm sure it's not. Uh, so don't, every time you see a Hindu, assume that all of them are going to go through this cycle of uh, childhood and on up through until they become a, uh, a sannyasi and then uh, enter into mukti. But those that are serious, about stopping this cycle of birth and re of incarnation and reincarnation, those that are serious about that, yes, they will go through this cycle. They will take this journey that I've just described. And this uh, Upanishads that I read, this portion of the Upanishads, are a window into the philosophy and spirituality that leads a person to take this path uh, down life's road.